Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Made You Book. My name's Gretchen and today I'm finally finishing my last review from this year's Booker Prize long list. That book is How to Build a Boat by Elaine Feeney. Um, I am sorry that it has taken me so long to get to this one. Things have just been super crazy with work and I haven't had as much time to read. I actually finished this I think about a week ago and I just haven't had the time to sit down and make the video but even though I saved this one for last I am so happy to report that I loved this book. This was such a phenomenal read and I am so glad that this was long listed because I don't think that I would have heard of this book otherwise and I so emotionally connected to this book that I think that this is one that is going to stay with me for a very long time. Um, so this book follows kind of three primary characters, but the main character is Jamie. Jamie is a 13-year-old boy. Um, his mother died shortly after giving birth to him, and he has kind of struggled through life with that and he doesn't really have a lot to remember her by but he does have this video clip of her swimming and his kind of life's goal is he decides that he wants to build a perpetual motion machine to keep her memory alive and we also catch Jamie at the start of a new school year. So not only is this a new school year where he's going to be introduced to new teachers and new students, there's also a new father that is over the school. His name is Father Falks and this guy's an asshole. Uh, he is probably one of the most dislikable characters that I, well, unlikable, I should say, characters that I have ever run into in a book. He is absolutely horrible. And to know that there are actually people like him in our education systems that are responsible for taking care of our children's education is just absolutely detestable. Um, this man was absolutely awful to Jamie and he kind of made it his personal goal to get Jamie to quit and to leave. And he made it very difficult for Jamie and Jamie's father, Owen, to be able to stay and continue to be at the school. Um, he obviously didn't know how to handle um, a, a student like Jamie. Uh, one thing that I did not mention is that Jamie is, we're led to believe that Jamie is autistic. I cannot remember if they actually came out and blatantly said that he's autistic, but we as the reader are definitely meant to um, think that the he is autistic and this father, Falks, definitely does not know how to um, handle neurodivergent children. And it is blatantly obvious and it is infuriating. Now, he does not treat Jamie very well. Jamie is also bullied by some of the other students. And our second primary character, her name is Tess. And Tess is um, a teacher at the school and she um, kind of takes Jamie under her wing and Tess kind of has a lot going on in her own life. She is in um, a marriage that's kind of crumbling. She is also suffering from infertility and she is feeling like she's being smothered by all of the things that are going on in her life. Um, which brings me to the next asshole character in this book, which is her husband, Paul. So Paul is a jerk, but he tries to convince the world that he is not. He showers Tess with uh, words of love and admiration, but it's in a condescending way. Um, it's all backhanded. He is very controlling and she deserves so much better than that. She's a 
beautiful person and he just tries to dampen her shine and it, it it's awful and he treats her with such disrespect it's almost infantilizing and I didn't like him either. Um, him and Father Fox could get on a boat and sail away and I would be completely happy with that. Um, but I digress. <laughs> There's a third character um, and he is also a teacher at the school um, and he's kind of new to town. He's this mysterious um, guy. His name is Tig, and he is the woodshop teacher and one of the things that Father Falks does that absolutely infuriates me is he tries to keep Jamie from participating in the woodshop classes. Um, Tig sees that there's an opportunity there for Jamie um, to kind of find um, peace and solace in that class and, you know, get him away from the bullies. And um, when he approaches Father Fox about it, he does not want him in there. So there's kind of this battle between um, Tig and Tess who are trying to protect him and do what's best for Jamie against Father Fox, who basically just wants to run him out of the school. Eventually, um, we get to the point where instead of a perpetual motion machine, we are now getting Jamie to build a boat um, to kind of help him cope with the loss of his mother and make peace with it ultimately. And um, so the story kind of follows, you know, around that. There's so much else that's going on. Now, obviously, the plot of the story is revolving around Jamie's time at school and his interactions with these two teachers and the act of building the boat. But there is so much humanity in this book, and it is beautiful. For every horrible thing that Father Fox has done, to Jamie, Tess and Tig are doing 20 beautiful things for Jamie. And the dynamic that is between each of them with Jamie and also the kind of chemistry that we have between Tess and Tig, I could just eat that up all day. It made this novel so much more interesting, um, having that kind of um, tension under the current of the book as well. And we got to not only explore Jamie and his grief, but we got to explore Tess's grief as well. The grief, the, the grief of her um, and her failing marriage. Um, we also got some insight on her own personal relationship with her father um, and uh, the way that she was treated by not only her husband, but her in-laws who are also uh, welcome to get on that boat with Falks and Paul as well. Um, and it was just such a beautiful story. It gave me so much hope and I truly feel that for Anybody that has ever had a, a neurodivergent person in their life, that this, this just touched and it tugged on absolutely all of my heartstrings because it truly is a misunderstanding with a lot of neuro, neurodivergent people. We need to take the time to get to learn them and know them. And so many times people will get frustrated and they put their frustration on that person. And it's not actually that person's fault. It's the fact that we are being frustrated. We are being impatient because we don't understand. And if we took the time to understand, we would have better relationships with those neurodivergent people in our lives. And not only would that benefit us, but 
at the end of the day, we have to be there for them as well. Um, they are doing nothing wrong. They are living their life the way that they know to live it. And we cannot expect them to fit into the mold that we make for them in our societies. And Father Falks and it was the perfect example of somebody that is ignorant and does not know how to handle situations like that and also thinks that there is something wrong with Jamie because he doesn't conform to the normal standards of intelligence or social skills that Father Falks has set as his standard and I I, I just I, like I said I thought that his character although I hated him I think that it was so important to have a character like him in this book to just show how often people that have that are neurodivergent struggle with those types of people in their lives. And I think that if you have ever um, maybe been the person that was being frustrated with somebody that is on the spectrum or is neurodivergent, reading a book like this will really give you a better, healthier perspective on how those people operate and what we can do to interact with them better, to make not only their lives more fulfilling, but our lives more fulfilling. And this book was just, it was a beacon of hope that there are people in this world that can accept and not only accept people, like that, like Jamie, but also embrace them and not try to dampen their spirits or change them, but to actually embrace their differences. And the way that this book had such a strong sense of community, um, everybody that came together to help Jamie build the boat. It was so heartwarming. It was so touching. And the very end, like the ending was just absolutely beautiful. Um, I so connected with this book emotionally. I just wanted to take Jamie and give him a big giant hug and tell him that it would be okay. I wanted to give Tess a hug and tell her that it was going to be okay. But this is also a great representation of found family. Jamie lost his mom, um, but he was able to find somebody that cared for him the way that a mother would and nourished him the way that a mother, um, or not nourished, but nurtured him the way that a mother would. And it was just a simple simple story but it packs so much meaning there is so much depth to it and I am so glad that I read this um I I am thinking honestly having not read this book prior to the shortlist being announced and making my personal shortlist video I honestly think that I would have to bump one off of my personal short list. Um, and I would say, oh, I, 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 yeah, I, I would have to think about that more. I think that this book just hit such an emotional chord with me that I don't, I, I don't necessarily think that it's, the story or the plot of what happened that made me want to change my personal shortlist. It's just every once in a while, you're going to read one of those books that you just have an instant connection with and you feel like you know the characters 
and this was that book for me um, from the long list. So, so yeah, I am so excited to see uh, what Elaine Feeney comes out with next. Um, the way that I know that she can write characters and not only write characters, but exude and get that emotion to come out of me. Um, I think that she could be one of my favorite reader or one of my favorite authors. Um, I'm not sure if she has any backlist titles. I will have to look for that. But but yeah, I definitely ended my Booker journey for 2023 on a high note. And um, for any of you that didn't think that you wanted to read this book because it didn't make the short list, please give it a chance. I think that you will be pleasantly surprised. Um, how, um, just how quaint and how lovely and how beautiful this little book is. Um, I'm curious, so have any of you read this book? Did you have, um, the same kind of emotional connection? Who was your favorite character? Um, I, I would actually have to think about who my favorite character was. Um, I, I would love to, I mean, obviously I would like to think that it's Jamie, but I also loved Tess. I thought she was a great character and, uh, Jamie's dad. Oh my gosh. He, he was such a good dad to Jamie. Um, there's just so much, um, yeah, so much good goodness in this book, um, to balance out all the ugliness that, some people were, you know, throwing at Jamie, but this was um, definitely a five-star read for me. I am so glad that I read this, and um, and yeah, we're done. So we don't have any more Booker books, um, but we do have the winner announcement coming up on Sunday. So that's going to be exciting. And then my, my next thing is I'm going to try to start to look at the eligible books for the international booker uh, so that I can start to get a head start on some of the ones that are getting buzz for those so that I can make an informed um yeah, I would say an informed prediction video when we get closer to the International Booker long list being announced. So thank you so much for following along with me on my Booker journey this year. Um, I have had an absolute blast and Thank you to anybody that has subscribed or commented um, or reached out to me about any of these books. It has been so rewarding talking about these um, and I have really started to um, you know, uh, interact with some of my subscribers and it has been absolutely wonderful. All of the comments, you have all been so kind and I, I really appreciate it and I can't wait until the International Booker. I am super excited about that. So until uh, my next video, you don't have to wait for the International Booker to get another video out of me, obviously, but until the next time, we will see you and take care. Bye.